So now this next session is a perfect follow-up for this uh, webinar that we've just seen, uh, and it will give us an insight of some of NEMO's current partner projects, projects that have been successfully funded in their application. You've uh, heard a bit about MOI already, and then we have added another uh, partner project of NEMO, which is Indiches, measuring the, the impact of digital culture and Horizon 2020 funded project. Uh, having said this, I don't want to miss mentioning that NEMO has various other great partner projects, among them the B Museum project, which essentially provides capacity building for museum professionals in Georgia, Armenia and Azerbaijan, and a new project, Charter, that will create a blueprint for the European heritage sector skills strategy and the professional development. I will now uh, leave the floor to Sara Di Giorgio, who works at ICO, the General Institute for the Union Catalog of the Italian Libraries. She leads this Horizon 2020 funded project, Indiches, that focuses on understanding the social and economic impact of digitalization. Sara, please let us know where Indiches stands at the moment, what you're up to in the coming months, and for uh, most of all, how people and NEMO members can get involved. Sara. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. I try to share my screen. Just a few moments. I think that here it is. Okay, so <laughs> thank you very much, Julia. Thank you, all of you, for being here. Here And what I want to say is that uh, ICCU has also a very long history in uh, European project. Uh, since 2004, we have been working in, uh, yes, in a European project and it's a really a great experience for innovating and knowing people and uh, enriching our professional work uh, in, an, in a very yes, incredible way. So, uh, INDIS, as, as um, Julia said, stands for Measuring the Impact of Digital Culture, and it is a project founded by Horizon 2020 program in response to the call about digitization, digital single market, and European culture, new challenges for creativity, intellectual property rights, and copyrights. Uh, INDIS brings together a consortium coordinated by CCU, that is a central institute that coordinates the Italian Library of the Italian Ministry of Culture. And uh, in our consortium are participating 14 organizations from eight different European countries. This consortium is very rich because it's made up by networks of cultural heritage institutions like NEMO and Europeana and the Michele Association. And then uh, because it's a research uh, project, international research groups in the domains of culture economics, such as the Fondazione Bruno Kessler and in IP law and digital humanities like the University of Leuven. And then also are joining uh, the, um, con the consortium representative from the culture and creative industries like Capital Itech, that is a French company specialized in business model development and NGOs with the social innovators, platform developers like Platonic. And finally also um, an Austrian company specialized in web intelligence, media analytics uh, named Web Lizard. So, um, the goal of indices is to empower policy maker and decision maker in the cultural heritage sector to fully understand the social and economic impact of digitization in their sector and to address the need for innovative reuse of cultural assets. We have started with these questions. What is the social and economic impact of digitization in culture and creative sectors? And then how digitization affects our use of cultural heritage assets. So to answer this question, Indices is developing a solid framework to assess and measure the impact of cultural heritage. We are conducting a comparative analysis of the effects of digi digitization and IPR regulation, and we will provide guidelines on how cultural institutions can implement and measure their readiness to digital single market overcoming 
IPR issues and supporting openness in order to stimulate digital culture content reuse with operative solution and business model to solve our needs. So we have setting up an open observatory that include a participatory space to facilitate the community engagement and um, in the observatory, um, a visual analytics dashboard to visualize data and trends and a self-assessment tool to test the realness of cultural heritage institutions to face the digital single market and the digital transformation are included. Then uh, we think about uh, uh, impact. Uh, and we when and then we usually focus on what to measure and how and why to measure this impact. And so to understand the effects of the digital revolution on modes uh, of culture and creative production and on their economic and social impact, a specific framework has been developed by Professor Pierluigi Sacco, the scientific coordinator of uh, Indices Project. This framework distinguishes between three regimes of cultural production. Patronage, that is named culture.10, applied to non prevalently market oriented sectors such as visual art, performing arts, museums, and heritage. Then the creative industry, that is known as culture 2.0, applied to industrialized form of culture and creative production based on the distinction between producer and audiences. And finally, open communities of practice that is known as culture 3.0, where the distinction between producers and users becomes blurred to an increasing extent. Now we are focusing on culture 3.0 regime, gathering data, data from social media channels to analyze to what extent people on a specific platform are producing and sharing a certain type of content and how much the production is increased during the COVID-19 uh, outbreak. Here you can see the home page of the Indices Open Observatory and a landing page for the assembly participatory space where participants throughout a sequence of activities are enabled to define and make a decision on a specific topic. The first process of the Indices platform was the co-creation process to initiate activities that had to be Migrated online due to the pandemic. So the COVID-19 pandemic has demanded the remote work and Platonic who developed the platform, but together with all the indices partner, have taken this as an opportunity to speed up some developments and deployments. So the participatory platform will be soon open to a wider participation of cultural institutions, policymakers, funding agencies, researchers, and practitioner work networks to conduct co-creation activities and to strengthen capacity building, and then to experience the value of opening their knowledge through how joining participatory process. Here you can see the visual analytic dashboard integrated in the open observatory to explore the content archive, tracking recent trends and comparing different data sets. It will be possible uh, with this tool to measure the social impact of the outbreak in the cultural sector, having statistics about the initiatives that museums and institutions are launching online, such as exhibition or digital tours, providing the public with safe and convenient online services. So I would like really to invite uh, all of you museums and experts that are working in museums and also other cultural institutions to collaborate with us. So get involved and participate in our activities by answering these three online surveys. They are open until the end of the year. The first is about the intellectual property rights challenges in the cultural heritage sector and or whether IPRs contribute to generating further revenues. And the other two is about collecting use cases of reuse of digital cultural heritage in products and services to evaluate the value chain generated by informal initiatives, communities and sector. We are organizing also uh, two workshops. The first will be on March and will explore the relationship between researchers and uh, cultural heritage sector. So 
stay tuned and uh, if you want to be uh, updated on our activities please join our mailing list and uh, go to the website or in our facebook and twitter channel to to learn about the project thank you Thank you, Sara, very much for your uh, very short presentation, uh, your very good and short presentation and short is also our time. This is why I am just want to ask you one question. How do you think members or everybody who's actually listening now can get involved in the project? You have mentioned the surveys, uh, you have mentioned the workshops. Are the workshops uh, open to everybody who wants to participate? Absolutely, yes, they are uh, open to everybody and it's also a good opportunity to know how it works our participatory space and to get involved and to get in touch with uh, also all the stakeholders, all the partners that are working in indices. But then I would like to invite museums who have intensified their activities in social channel uh, during this uh, pandemic period to get in touch with uh, with me directly because we could uh, uh, yes investigate and uh, analyze the statistics and the results for our research so participate to the survey come to the workshop and write me personally to get involved with this very innovative and uh, promising project thank you Super. Thank you very much, Sarah. And again, also from our side, we are uh, partners and we, uh, we have decided to become partners because we really believe that if we want to uh, start a digital transformation for the large sector of museums, then we need data and this is the data um, that, that we should come up with. So I'm coming now uh, very quickly to Pirio. <laughs> who's already been on the stage. Um, and we have already heard a bit about uh, the MOI project, but um, this time we want to hear a bit more about how the project uh, works, not so much the application process. So Pirio, the floor is yours. Thank you, Julia. And uh, let's go to the presentation. I promise to do, do uh, how much time do you give me? <laughs> Let's do it uh, this way. I would like to end the session at one. So we have yes. 10 minutes. All right. Very good. Uh, 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 and if something remains unclear, I, uh, there's at the end of the presentation, there are uh, links to further information. So I'll try to be very brief and you can get more information from <clears throat> that slide, uh, which will be the, uh, distributed to uh, uh, all participants. Uh, and I think many of you already participated in the previous session. If not, uh, this is our MOI Museums of Impact project uh, in, in a nutshell. So, so this is, this is uh, our technical details. We are a Creative Europe uh, uh, funded uh, project uh, that will last until November 2022. We work with uh, uh, 11 partners from eight different countries, which you see mapped out there. Uh, museums, uh, museum advisors, ministries, networks, development agencies, and just to specify uh, NEMO's role in the, this, uh, uh, NEMO is a very important uh, network of museums and a, a multiplier network uh, for, for us. Uh, and uh, one of the very big benefits of, of working with NEMO is, is, of course, for example, being able to reach out to a large number of uh, museums and museum organization across Europe. So, so this is, uh, uh, the, uh, these kinds of benefits, are, uh, 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 a lot of the partners bring different benefits to the consortium, but this is a specific benefit uh, uh, for this consortium uh, that we uh, get by working with NEMO. And uh, what uh, we aim to do is, is, is to create a European Museum self-evaluation framework, uh, a, a development framework through which mu a museum can assess its uh, activities, evaluate what it's doing and, and think uh, uh, whether uh, these, the, the solutions and, and uh, decisions it's taking are helping it towards impact in that sense that it wants, wants to do. Uh, uh, there was a question earlier about uh, connection to, for example, uh, measuring impact, but uh, 
uh, a simple question is that uh, this project is not about measuring impact, it's about creating impact uh, uh, through your activities and the framework will help you formulate, reformulate or at least evaluate your uh, activities in a museum uh, in order to achieve uh, uh, impacts in society. And uh, 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 in practice, how the uh, framework works is that there are uh, evaluation areas. Uh, in this draft, there are six of them, different areas within museum activities uh, uh, through which you will go uh, with a series of evaluation questions, for example, how well do you know your audiences? Uh, have you selected uh, specific target audiences? Have you developed uh, specific activities? Uh, uh, or are your resources uh, 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 directed towards uh, creating impact? Or uh, are the competencies in your museums uh, 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 aligned with the uh, impact or, or, or you want to achieve? these kinds of questions. It's a bit theoretical at the moment, but we are slowly going towards uh, developing a real uh, practical development evaluation framework. And, and uh, that uh, will probably help you understand much better what this is about. But, uh, but a developmental framework, uh, evaluation framework uh, that helps you increase your impact in society is what we are aiming for. And just a reminder what we are talking about when we are talking about impact is the change you want to make or to be in the society. And, and the whole principle of evaluate, uh, developmental evaluation in museums and using a framework starts from the fact that all museum organizations need to define the change that they want to uh, achieve in society first and then follow up uh, uh, a thorough look at their activities, keeping this uh, 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 definition in mind. Some key questions that can be asked in this connection is that for whom and with whom are the services planned uh, or implemented in order to achieve the intended impact? How are the resources put into active use to produce the intended impact? Or has the museum's range of services been created on the basis of conscious choices to achieve the intended impact? These kinds of evaluation questions are included in the framework. And uh, 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 this will bring, we hope, a lot of benefits for museums also in terms of advocacy and presenting our, our value in society. Uh, and we can only develop this uh, framework uh, with the full cooperation and, and involvement of the, of the museum field itself and uh, how can you be as a museum involved in the, in the development of the, of the framework? In addition, of course, that we have a, have a variable partnership of, of, of uh, partners, which also includes museums. First of all, uh, the work pro program includes a number of open stakeholder forums, and we've just had our first stakeholder forum in Germany. Uh, spec theoretically speaking, because it was an online event, but meant for the German museum landscape, and there will be further stakeholder forums. The next one will take place in Italy or will be directed towards the Italian museum landscape. And these will be used to formulate the model together with the museum uh, sector and its stakeholders. And we are, invite everybody to join these stakeholder forums. We will also be piloting the draft framework uh, next summer and autumn uh, in, in the museums across Europe, uh, mainly in the partner countries, but uh, possibly elsewhere also. And this will be done based on an application process that uh, the project will announce later. Uh, we don't have the possibility to do the pilots in a, in a huge number of museums, but there will be possibilities to join this. And included in the project, there's also at the end, towards the end of the project, there's also a mobility scheme uh, connected to developmental evaluation in, in museums and using the framework uh, through which a number of museum professionals have the possibility uh, uh, to join uh, and to increase their competence in, in, in uh, 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 developmental evaluation or using the framework. Uh, you see the phases, the next phase is happening at the bottom of the slide, but what we 
uh, what we at the end hope that this will be a tool that uh, will help to think about the museum's impact in society and also to increase it. It's not about quality in museum processes. It's not about uh, measuring the impact, but it, this model or framework can support and add to such evaluations. Uh, it will be modular and it will be freely accessible uh, um, to anybody. And uh, our initial uh, uh, plan is that this uh, uh, access will be ha happening happening in the future through the NEMAR network. And we have also planned a number of support materials, hopefully also even support actions to uh, help you uh, implement this uh, model in your museum if you wish to do so. So we are only just starting, uh, uh, but we hope to be able to provide uh, 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 more concrete results uh, uh, in a, a near future. And if you know, want to know more about the project, uh, you're free to well, you're welcome to contact us email, uh, Facebook and uh, web pages of the MOI project are available. And that's it. Thank you very much, Pierre. Yo. Thank you for your presentation. I uh, would like to ask you uh, one question, and that is uh, actually one that comes from the stakeholder forum, which we, as you uh, were mentioning, had with uh, some most of German museums. I felt that there was a bit of a hesitation towards uh, an, an evaluation framework. Can you tell us what you think is, is the biggest hesitation from, from those museums towards a framework? Is it, the, the, is it a challenge to, to feel evaluated or assessed, or is it the general uh, anxiety with something new coming up? Well, it, of course, it can be a great number of things, and we've already identified challenges that come from working on a European level on something that we should need to uh, uh, agree with uh, in museum activities across Europe. So, uh, but uh, I think many people uh, have been uh, faced with evaluations uh, that are top-down evaluations come from outside and possibly are connected to funding, for example. And you should be very much aware that this is not that kind of an evaluation. It's a self-evaluation model uh, that's meant for the museum organization as a tool of development. So I, I've been starting to think that we might not even call it an evaluation model. We might call it rather a developmental a development framework, uh, so it, just in order to avoid confusing this with, with, with uh, for example, measuring something or assessing your performance, because this is not about assessing your performance. And of course, the other thing is that this asks uh, openness and uh, a democracy from the institutions. It's, it's, it's asking them to make a joint assessment uh, with possibly all the staff included about how we are performing, what's our goal in the society and, and uh, how can we choose the best ways of working towards this goal. And perhaps this is not an easy process in, in, in all, the, all, the, uh, all the museum landscape and not all the organizations. And this just has to be recognized in developing the model. Yeah. Thank you, Pierio. I think uh, when you you were showing one slide in the in the webinar before, which said it's not easy, but it's absolutely worth it. And I think this is what we need to keep in mind when it comes to European cooperation and adapting something new. Uh, I also heard a very nice comment from. Uh, Dragana, I think, who was saying, um, I, I started working with um, uh, colleagues and I came out uh, uh, working with friends. So I think this is also something with which we can end. Thank you very much, both to Sara, both to Pirio for this session. I'm sorry that it was very short. We couldn't uh, go into a, a long a question and answers, but as you are saying, you're open to any kind of questions from, from the audience. Uh, uh, via all that you have provided us with, and uh, you can also get in touch via Nemo with uh, each of the individual projects. So thank you very much. Um,
before I end this session, I uh, would like to invite all the Nemo. No, first of all, I would like to invite all of you to help us improve um, our digital, first digital annual conference, which means that I would like to invite you to fill out this evaluation survey. It just helps us to understand what we did well and what could be done better for the next time, hopefully in person, by the way. Uh, thank you, everybody, for this uh, great conference, uh, four days with a very small team. And again, a lot of thanks to this team here at NEMO. They did the incredible, really. Um, we meet again for only the NEMO members at uh, 2 p.m. CET uh, for our NEMO annual general meeting, first ever digital annual general meeting. So this is going to be a new experience for all of us. If you haven't registered as a member, but uh, you would like uh, to participate, uh, please write a message to office at nemo.org. Um, and for those who can get enough of us, um, you're invited to join us at 8 p.m. CET for a pub quiz and networking roulette. Uh, and again, if you haven't registered for this one and you would like to join, it's going to be fun, I promise. <laughs> Please uh, find the link to uh, the meeting also in the chat. And with this, I say thank you to everybody who has been with us for the four days, three days, two days, or just today. It was a great experience for us. I'm very happy that this was over and over a European cooperation that we did digitally, but I think it went very well. So I hope to see you next year in person. Goodbye. <laughs>